Okay, welcome back to these videos. Uh, we're going to look at solving equations today. But first of all, let me remind you what we talked about last time, and that is that I mentioned um, that I want to encourage you to try to work these problems first on your own and then watch the solution afterwards. And also, I wanted to warn you that we do go pretty quickly over the solution, so you get ready on that pause button, and you may have to uh, watch these more than once. All right, speaking of pause button, why don't you... Uh, Try these two on your own. See if you can work these two problems. Okay, what you notice about these, they're very different. The first one's an expression, so you're, you're asked to simplify it. The second one's an equation, so you're asked to solve it. Even though they look very similar, they're very different. To simplify, remember, you have to get the LCD, which is going to be 5 times the quantity x plus 2. So the first one gets multiplied by 5 over 5, the second one gets multiplied by x plus 2 over x plus 2. Carefully, the, the 5 multiplies the whole quantity, so you get 10x minus 5. Here the, four, the negative 4 multiplies the whole quantity, so you get minus 4x minus 8. When you combine like terms on the numerator and simplify, you get 6x minus 13 over 5 times the quantity x plus 2. Now when you have the equation, uh, this is actually a special type of equation. This is, this is called a uh, proportion. A proportion is when you have two fractions that are equal to each other. When you have a proportion, you can actually cross multiply when you solve it. 5 times the quantity x, uh, 2x minus 1 equals 4 times the quantity x plus 2. Use the distributive law, get all the x's on one side, divide by 6, so there's your solution. Okay, so let, let me give you another one to try. Work these two problems. We'll go over these in just a minute. Okay, did you notice the first one is an equation? The second one is an expression? Now, the way you handle these is very different. With, with, with an equation, it's easier, I think, because you can get rid of all the fractions. You can always do that when you have an equation, remember? Uh, you multiply both sides by the LCD, in this case x squared, so you get x squared minus 3x equals 4, and you solve the quadratic equation. There's many different ways to solve quadratic equations. Um, here, let's try solving by factoring. Always try that first, I would suggest. And then you end up getting x equals 4 or x equals negative 1. Now, with the expression, you can't uh, get rid of the fractions. You have to, in fact, use the LCD as your common denominator, right? So your, your common denominator is going to be x squared. So what you end up with, you multiply the first one by x squared over x squared, second one by x over x, you end up with x squared minus 3x plus 4 over x squared. You're done. There's nothing more you can do to that. Okay, let's keep on going. Speaking of quadratic equations, uh, another technique besides factoring that works that's important is completing the square. And uh, the idea of completing the square is going to be used a lot in uh, future math classes. So you should, you should be able to do this. All right, so go ahead and see if you can remember the technique. We'll go over it in just a minute. Okay, there are several different ways of doing this. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to first move the constant over to the other side. I do that by adding 3 to both sides. Then I'm going to factor out the, um, the 2 from... Uh, 2 is the coefficient of x squared, so I'm going to factor out the 2 from each of these two terms. And then I'm going to complete the square inside the parentheses. Remember how to do that? You take half the coefficient of x, which would be negative 1, and you square it. That gives you 1. That's the magic number that makes this into a perfect square. What did you really do? You didn't add 1, you actually added 2 because you see this 2 out here? So you got to add 2 to the right side as well. So anyway, since it's a perfect square now, you can write it as x squared minus 2x plus 1. It's the same thing as x minus 1 squared. Now, you can, now, now we can finish the problem. Now you can um, divide by 2, right? You can divide by 2. And now you can take the square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus or minus. That's easy to do. Then let's rationalize the denominator. You could write it as radical 5 over radical 2. Then you could multiply top and bottom by um, radical 2. So you get 1 plus or minus square root of 10 over 2. Now let's get the common denominator. So your final answer is x equals 2 plus or minus square root of 10 over 2. All right, let's try the same... Let's try the same... Uh, problem, but let's use the quadratic formula now. Quadratic formula is right here. 
Please don't call it the quadratic equation. That makes teachers really upset. Call it the quadratic formula. This is, this is a quadratic equation, isn't it? So if you want to use the quadratic formula, uh, you would first get zero on one side, and you have to identify the coefficients, right? A is 2, B is negative 4, C is negative 3. Then you gently place them into the quadratic formula. Make sure you put them in carefully. And um, be careful inside the square root. That, that's where it's easy to make a mistake. By the way, this thing inside the square root is called the discriminant. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. So inside the square root, the, the discriminant becomes 16 plus 24, doesn't it? Anyway, so that becomes 40 inside the square root, which can be um, simplified. Isn't 40 4 times 10? So then you, you could write this as um, 4 plus or minus square root of 4 times 10. The 4 can come out of the square root become a 2. Then what you can do is you can factor a 2 out of the numerator, 2 out of the denominator, and cancel those those 2's. So your final answer is x equals 2 plus or minus square root of 10 over 2, which is exactly what we got in part in problem number 5. Okay? Alright, well why don't you use this quadratic formula to see if you can solve this one right here. Okay, when you identify the coefficients and put them in the quadratic formula carefully, inside the square root, the discriminant becomes 4 minus 16, which becomes um, negative 12. So this is not going to be a real number in here. In fact, if you were trying to find the real solutions to this equation, you'd say there are no real solutions. But for now, let's just write it in terms of i. We say there's two non-real solutions or, or two complex solutions. Square root of negative 12 becomes i times the square root of 12. And then um, you can write square root of 12 as 2 times square root of 3. And you can do what we did before. You could factor a 2 out of the um, numerator and cancel the 2 with the denominator. So you get negative 1 plus or minus i square root of 3. All right, let's do a few more here. Uh, well, first I want to ask a question. This is what we've been hitting, hitting towards. You know, how many square roots, or how many real solutions can a quadratic equation have? And it turns out there are three cases. It depends on the discriminant. As we saw before, if the discriminant's greater than zero, then you're going to have two real solutions because you're going to have a plus or minus a real number. That's going to give you two real solutions. If the discriminant equals zero, then this whole thing drops out. And notice how you just have one sol real solution. And if the discriminant is less than zero, this, you're going to have a negative inside the square root, so you're going to have a um, i, so you're going to have no real solutions. As we'll see later, there's an interesting graphical reason for this. Um, when we get to uh, quadratic functions, it turns out when, when, you, when you solve a quadratic equation equaling zero, it's when the graph uh, crosses the x-axis. So if you have two real solutions to the quadratic equations, you have two x-intercepts for the quadratic function. If you have one real solution to the quadratic equation equals zero, you have one x-intercept. It turns out it has to be the ver vertex. And if you have no real solutions, that, that just means the quadratic function doesn't cross the x-axis. We'll get to that later. Anyway, let's do a few more. Um, let's do one. I think we have time for one, one, one more. Now, this does not look like a quadratic equation at all. It looks like a fourth degree equation. But it turns out if you look at it just right, you can think of this as a quadratic e equation. Isn't it something squared? It's x squared that's being squared. I like to think of it like this. Even if I don't write this, in my mind, I'm thinking of this as like w squared minus w minus 12 equals 0. Which, which factors? You see w is, is x squared in this case. It does factor, so think of it like this. Uh, instead of w minus 4, it becomes x squared minus 4. And instead of w plus 3, it becomes x squared plus 3 equaling 0. Then you'd set each one equal to 0. And when you solve this, though, look, look what happens. You set each of them equal to 0, so x squared equals 4, or x squared equals negative 3. But x squared can equal negative 3. That's not going to be a real solution, is it? Uh, you get x equals plus or minus 2 here. Here you're going to get i, x equals plus or minus i times square root of 3. If, if the equations, if the problem said find the real solutions, you would rule those out and you just say x equals plus or minus 2. In this, this class, we're pretty much going to be focusing on just the real solutions. Uh-oh, we got to go. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.